We have a really rich knitting culture in Iceland and a strong knitting history as well. We um, learn to knit in schools, both boys and girls. And I feel that everybody has somehow a relation to knitting. They might love it or they might have had problems with it or something, but at least they have lopi sweaters, they wear the sweaters. And just walking around the streets of, of Reykjavik or, or of any other town in Iceland, you see a lot of knitted garments every day. When my grandpa was growing up, he has told me stories from when he was falling asleep, maybe six years old or something, how he fell asleep to the clicking of the needles of his mom, but also my great-grandfather knitted with her in the evenings. He was a fisherman, so if the weather was too bad to go out fishing, he would knit alongside my grandma. Well, the big knitter in my family was my great-grandma on my mother's side, and she always used to give us kids woolen socks or mittens for Christmas, along with a book or a box of chocolates. And it was always really exciting to see what color you would get, or if the sock would have stripes, or if the mitten would have pattern or something. Um, she knitted constantly, so I really have a lot of memories of her just knitting shawls also. I have one shawl that she, uh, that she made. And it's really nice to have these old pieces from the family. Even though I learned how to knit when I was about eight or nine, I never really got it. I never really understood what was happening. But um, I really can re define the moment when I finally understood it. So this happened when I was uh, pregnant with my daughter. I was in my early 30s. If you've seen the film Matrix, you know, when Neo, he sees the green numbers going up and down, like he sees the code be behind the Matrix. That was like, that, the moment was like that for me. So I finally understood what was going on with the string and with the needles and how the loops were being formed and how I was actually manipulating this magic. And that was a defining moment for me in knitting. I understood it, so I moved forward. I also really like to experience the magic of knitting with my daughter. She is nine now and has just learned to knit in school. And when she was little, I used to have her sit on my lap, facing away from me. I was knitting and she had her hands on top of my hands. So she could experience the motions and the kind of calm, repetitive movements that you experience in knitting. I really love um, empowering my students with teaching them new techniques and methods and also to teach them about the Icelandic wool and the Icelandic knitting history and heritage. I see my patterns as a beginning point for knitters and I really love it when they modify the patterns or make their little changes to, to really personalize the patterns. And um, I think that's the great thing about learning more in knitting. You can always add to your, your uh, skills and you can always use them to make garments and things that are really, really personal for you.